the real deal. Lancer, baby. What's up, Real Dealers? Welcome back to the Real Deal Airsoft. And in this build, you're gonna see this piece of shit China gun go from this to this. By the end of the video, you're gonna get a better idea about how motors work and which motor you should choose for your build. And this is gonna be an exciting build because this is for a player that's new to airsoft, just started playing six minutes ago. Just kidding. It's for my boy Anthony Fajita. He's a seasoned veteran. He's actually a sponsored player who's uh, entering into a tournament in the CKB Russian tournament. And he said that he needs the real deal. So for this build, uh, we're gonna be doing a couple things. Number one, we're moving this child safety lock right here. <laughs> no. All right. I don't know what's worse, this or uh, no non-quit chain spring system. I'm not gonna lie, this stock makes it look like really futuristic and different. The reason why I like it is because you can do this. <laughs> Rental. Oh yeah. More rentals. Hold it. All right guys, so what's going on for the internals? We're gonna be throwing in an ASG 30K motor, that's 16 TPA, uh, 13 to one ratio gears, the real deal performance piston assembly with the AOE corrected, you already know. We're going for that perfect compression, super trigger response. And to achieve that trigger response, we're gonna be using a Peron hybrid mosfet. The reason why is because this mosfet offers such insane trigger response. So we're gonna be able to program the trigger sensitivity to be hairline. Shake it and it'll shoot. All right, guys, by the end of this video, you're gonna get a really good idea on why I choose the motors I choose, and you're gonna understand terms like TPA, torque, and what type of magnets are good and bad. Wow, you thought I wasn't gonna show you the China trigger response reports? Come on now. You're gonna see that change. This not spammable, that's gonna change. All right, let's take a look at what motor the Lancer's got in her. All right, general China motor. Let's check the torque. All right, if you're able to turn your pinion, this is your pinion gear. If you're able to turn your pinion like this, there's, it's got really weak magnets, ferrite magnets. You can tell the difference between neo magnets and ferrite magnets by the way the pinion behaves. So right now it's so easy to move it that I can tell that the magnets are not strong. So this is a trash motor. This has ferrite magnets. You want neo magnets. And they're 10 times stronger than this, as well as this has a low TPA. I think this is around 14 TPA. And TPA basically means turns per armature. What the hell does that mean? Inside the motor is basically an armature. There's a shaft and like a body. And on that body is coils of copper. TPA determines turns per armature. So how many times the copper is turned around the armature, basically wrapped. So a motor with higher torque has more coils of copper around the motor armature. And it's that thing spinning inside. You see that thing spinning? So the wires are wrapped around that armature and on the sides are the magnets. So you want something, so when you lower your ratio on your gear set, usually you want a higher TPA motor, higher turns per armature and more TPA will mean that your motor will be more efficient, meaning that it'll draw less power to pull, to cycle the gun, and as well, it'll uh, get less hot. So if your motor is getting super, super hot, you need a higher TPA motor. So for this build, we're going with an ASG 30K motor. It's 16 TPA. So I could have easily put a 22 TPA in this gun and it would have been more efficient, but why did we go with the 16 TPA? Because ASG motors have super, super strong magnets. All right, boom, I'm gonna break this down so you can really understand it. ASG motors have some of the strongest magnets. When you take your motor, watch how the pinion is when I try and turn it. First of all, it's really hard to turn and it like is snappy, right? You could tell that the magnets are super strong. All ASG magnets are super strong, all Starway, all Tynely, all um, SHS magnets, they're all strong, they're all Neo. I usually go with ASG or SHS. The reason why is number one, the brushes are really high quality. Number two, the pinion teeth are sharp. You can tell the difference between low quality and high quality by how sharp the teeth are on the pinion. All right, so we went with an ASG 16 TPA. 
30K motor because we want rate of fire. This will get you around 30, round, 30 rounds per second with an 11.1 Lion. So basically when you're upgrading your motor, the first thing you wanna look into is does it have Neo magnets? Then the second thing you wanna look into is the TPA. How many turns for armature? How much torque does it have? Higher TPA means higher torque, but you have to understand that the higher torque you have, the lower the rate of fire. So if you have a 28 TPA motor, yeah, it'll have super, super strong trigger response and higher TPA motors are made for trigger response builds, um, but your rate of fire will suffer. So the reason why we want the 16 TPA because it's a balance between super torque and super speed. So a 22 TPA motor would be the higher torque. 22 TPA would be the most efficient for 13 to one, but we want the 16 TPA because this is so strong, the magnets, and we want that high rate of fire. So TPA is turns per armature, how much, uh, how much copper is wrapped around the armature of the motor. So that's what TPA is. When you're looking to upgrade your motor, stray away from high speed, you want high torque. If you're dropping your ratio of gears, you need higher torque magnets, higher torque motors. So. All right, guys, quick tip uh, before you open the gearbox. What I like to do is as um, at, after you unscrew all the screws, you want to push down on the gears through the bearings or bushings. So you push down, boom, boom, boom. Push down your anti-reversal latch, push down on your trigger. And then the last thing I do is I take a flathead and I shove it on in there into this part and twist up like that. Also push down the cylinder and it should release your, um, your gearbox to expose China. All right, let's take a look here. Stock 18 to one ratio gears. Pretty cool Lancer MOSFET. That's a micro switch. Click, switch, switch. Hmm, that's actually not too bad. You could really short stroke this, but we need a better MOSFET to control active braking, pre-cocking settings, trigger sensitivity. This ain't nothing you heard. And let's take a look at the piston. Guarantee you plastic teeth. If I were to guess. Oh, Lancer. You guys will never believe what's in Lancer. Metal teeth with AOE corrected on just the second tooth. Oh my God, but look at that grease. Looks good, right? Either way, we're gonna be replacing this with the real deal performance piston assembly. It's just a way stronger, faster, lightweight, better piston altogether. The piston head is garbage. You already should know. So I'm gonna get rid of that. You have an anti-reversal latch port to decompress the spring when you're uh, unboxing and look at the gears, they're actually shim. But I don't trust them, we're throwing in 13 to ones. We're gonna save the delayer chip. That basically, if you're having feeding problems, you put this on your second gear and that should resolve your feeding problem. Not too bad. All right, we just shimmed the bevel gear. Basically, uh, we put the bevel gear in and I usually start off with two or three shims on the bottom half, which is on uh, the bottom half. And then I just keep adding shims to the top until there's no play inside the gearbox and so it still spins freely. So that's how you determine the total amount of shims. Now I'm gonna determine uh, the motor height. We're gonna connect the grip to the bottom of the gearbox. We can uh, adjust the height of the motor. And then while we have the height of the motor, we can see how tight the bevel gear is. Um, if it's too loose, we need to raise the gear. And if it's too tight, we need to lower the gear. So stay tuned for that. All right, boys, so the bevel to pinion has been shimmed. What you're looking for is you want the rear of the teeth of the pinion to be flush with the rear of the teeth of the bevel so that they're like the same, so that they're like the teeth are meshing in the back. See how it's like perfectly. You don't want it too choked up too high and you don't want it too far down below the gear teeth. And also we're looking for this type of movement. Now when you press down on the gear, just a slight clicking. And because the, uh, the teeth on the pinion are really sharp on the ASG motor, you're gonna be able to really hear it. You hear that clicking? I already know this is gonna be perfectly shim. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sandwich the gearbox and then connect the grip one more time. And we're gonna see the play through this window on the gearbox. And if we still, if we have a little click click, it's perfect. If there's no movement, it's way too tight and we have to um, lower the gear. And if it is way too much play, we actually need to raise the gear. So that's how you shim your beveled pinion. And again, I choose ASG motors and SHS motors because of their pinion gear. CZI is good, but their pinion is really fat, 
cheap China status. It's like, it's not where it's at, <laughs> you heard? This is exactly what you're looking for for your beveled opinion motor alignment. You want to be able to hear that slight clicking and be able to move it. This is going to be one snappy trigger response build. This is where everyone fucks up the, the shimming guys. Take your time with your beveled opinion. Do this, check your alignment and then move on. All right, don't, don't mess up because then your gearbox is going to sound like a squealing pig and you can come crying to me in the DMs. Yo, brother, I need your help. Even though I'll still help you. All right, let's take a look at the shimming. Very minimal side-to-side -side axial movement and that they're free spinning. So this is a perfectly shim gearbox. What comes with the MOSFET is this little attachment that goes to your trigger. It houses the magnet, which is responsible for the magnetic sensor to give you that hairline trigger response. And as you can see, the magnet is paired right up, right under that sensor. So that when you pull the trigger, even the smallest amount of movement will set that thing off. So that's why I absolutely love this MOSFET guys. Um, this is the magnetic technology aspect to it as well as the optical. So combining magnetic and optical gives you a really, really crisp trigger response. All right, time to check the angle of engagement. As you can see, I mean, maybe you can't. Let me grab another flashlight. The third tooth has been modified to a specific angle so that it never scrapes that first tooth. So that's real important about the pistons. And let's see the position of where it contacts it. Sector gear contacts at around 12 o'clock, which in physics, it has more leverage. So the real deal performance piston assembly corrects the AOE and you never have to worry. All right, before connecting the motor, you wanna do a sensor check. So you connect the battery to the hybrid MOSFET with no motor connected. And inside you'll see the blinking light. I'm gonna change the selector position, the light should change. It indeed changed, semi, safe. Semi, I'm gonna pull the trigger, it should change too. Trigger sensor's working. All right, so it looks like all the sensors are working. All right, let's film the first test firing. That's how you decock it. Sick. All right, boys, let's see the difference. Is it the real deal? Can it clap kids in the cheeks and make them claw their heads? We'll find out. Don't make me do it. Shit. Pew, pew. Oh no, I'm out of ammo. That's real dealing. Now don't make me do it. Yeah, for sure, this is super high speed, super snappy. And by now, hopefully you guys have a better idea of what TPA is and maybe you'll be able to make an easier decision when choosing your next motor for your next build. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you didn't already. And until next time, I'll see you on the field. The real deal.